thousand Husky fans are whooping it up already as their anticipation of this big ball game in the quarterfinals of the NIT between the Rams and the Huskies. And we'd like to welcome you wherever you might be watching tonight's ball game in Richmond, Virginia with WVRN, the voice of sports in Richmond. In Connecticut, WTXX, Hartford, New Haven, and of course, uh, nationally with FNN Score, our cable network, and we're glad you could join us. Terry, it's going to be an exciting evening. Huskies haven't been in this position in a quarterfinal game of any kind of postseason tournament since 1964, and the fans are really enjoying it. Well, Mike, the fans have been waiting for this ball game for an awfully long time. It's something that Husky fever, it caught on here. Uh, you couldn't get a ticket in tonight's ball game. We see the officials right now, John Carr, Steve Romer, and Steve Skyle from the Mid-American Conference. Uh, I think they're a little excited here too, along with this crowd, and they are just happy to be here, a chance for the Huskies to get to the Big Apple next week. That's right, the winner here will join three other teams in the semifinals, and then hopefully they hope into the finals on Wednesday night the mecca of all basketball Madison Square Garden and of course that is why they're so excited this means a lot to both schools neither one has gotten this far in the NIT and not to mention the NCAA or any kind of postseason tournament so the fans are taking advantage the second home game for the Huskies in this 1988 NIT and let's go over to Roger Baker Torrington Connecticut number 20 Murray Williams At forward for VCU, a 6'7 senior from Brunswick, Virginia, number 32, John Thompson. At forward for Connecticut, a 6'5 freshman from Detroit, Michigan, number 23, Lyman DePriest. At center for VCU, a 6'7 senior from Birmingham, Alabama, number 52, Bruce Petway. At center for Connecticut, a 6'11 junior from Buffalo, New York, double zero, Cliff Robinson. At guard for VCU, a 6'4 junior from Washington, D.C., number 45, Chris Weeks. At guard for Connecticut, a 6'4 junior from Washington, D.C., number 25, Phil Gamble. At guard for VCU, a 6'3 junior from Sumter, South Carolina, number 30, Vince Wilson. At guard for Connecticut, a 6'5 sophomore from Newark, New Jersey, number 32, Tate George. Introducing the head coaches in his third year at VCU, Mike Polio, and in his second year at Stores, Husky coach Jim Calhoun. The officials for the Huskies game, and the Steve Rams Wilmer, set John to do Carr, battle in this Steve. NIT ball game will have the start when we come back right after this. It's been a tradition for the UConn fans this season. They stand in anticipation of the tip-off, waving those blue and white pom-poms, and they are really taking advantage of this uh, postseason home game. And it's got to be tough for Mike Polio and that group over there, the Rams, because there's only so much you're going to say as you're waiting for the tip-off. And they have to stand there and listen to this crowd just get themselves more and more pumped up and juiced up and getting the Husky players juiced up. So it's a real advantage for the Huskies here tonight. But this is a season ball club. Virginia Commonwealth coming in here. They beat some very good people to go into Marshall. They won 27 straight home games to win there. Uh, that's no picnic either. So they've had the experience. It'll be interesting to see what they can do tonight. Bruce Petway and Cliff Robinson set to jump it up. And it's controlled by the Huskies. Tate George will walk it up as the Rams open up in a man-to-man. -man. Cliff Robinson... Wait for Phil Gamble. Gamble, the uh, top three-point shooter on the Connecticut team. Now they go inside. Robinson, turn around, jump, it's good! And that's just what you want. You want to start out that ball game, get four or five passes on the ball, get everybody loose, get that nervousness out, and then go inside Robinson. Tough, tough on that spot. Huskies will open up in a zone. Handling the ball for the Rams, Vince Wilson. Ticked out of bounds by Lyman DePriest. And you'll see a lot of changing defenses by Jim Calhoun. They're opening up 2-1-2 zone now. You'll see man-to-man. -man. He likes to change it up, sometimes every time down the floor. So Wilson will inbound to Chris Cheeks. Cheeks, second leading scorer on the ball club. Wilson averaging just a little over two assists per ball game. This ball club, uh, the Rams, don't uh, get a lot of assists. And here's Chris Cheeks. He's got it. 
That'll silence the crowd as VCU is on the board. They take a 3-2 lead just underway here in Storrs, Connecticut. Got to get a hand up on him. He's too good a shooter. Averages 17 a ball game. You don't want to let good shooters get on track early in the game. Flip Robinson. It's the ball on the floor. Takes the jump. He's got it. He feels good. And you don't see a big guy shoot from 18 feet out, but that time he did. Well, he's only two away from 1,000, and maybe he wants to get him early in the game, get that monkey off his back right away. He's on a good track right now. Huskies in the zone. Rams working it around the perimeter. And here comes the jump by Phil Stinney. It's no good. Rebounded by the Huskies. And there's the man we talked about at the top, Murray Williams. Surprising shot. The Rams only shoot 33% from the three-point line. And already they've taken one from the outside early in the ballgame. Tate George watched by Vince Wilson. That's Murray Williams, the 6'6 freshman out of Torrington, Connecticut. Lyman the Priest now for UConn. Tries to go inside. Tate George posting up. Vince Wilson throws it out of bounds. Well, George got a little bit of a height advantage on Benny Wilson, and I look to see the Huskies go inside to take George because he's got good moves inside. He can post up real well for a guard. Rams trailing in the ball game by a 4-3 count. Both teams feeling each other out here, early stages. This one is knocked away, but a foul. That time they tried to go inside to Stinney Lyman DeBrees coming over the top. First personal on him, first down the Huskies in the ball game. Well, Lyman out of position, really. You've got to get half around on those low post people. If you play behind someone, in most cases, you're going to be called for that foul or you're going to have to let them take a good shot. Rams inbounding. Wilson, 6'3", junior, out of Sumter, South Carolina. They'll be looking to work it inside where they've got a lot of beef. They've got some height and they've got some size in there, some wide bodies. Bruce Petway, Phil Stenny, and John Thompson. Here's a jumper by Wilson in and out and drops hole. First two-pointer in the ballgame for Vince Wilson. And BCU has taken a one-point edge. Tate George almost walks. Now Gamble. The priest looking for Robinson's got it. Cliff puts it on the floor, loses it, and Tate George will come up with it. Here's Gamble. First shot. He's attempted. Nice drive down the lane, but an offensive foul will be gold against Phil Gamble. Well, Phil Stinney did a fine job of getting over. Gamble beat his man, but Phil Stinney got over and got outside, almost outside the block area. If you can get one foot outside the lane, you're going to get that. Here we see Gamble beat his man, and Stinney gets him. He's got one foot in the paint and one foot outside. Good position. He got the charge. Second turnover on the Huskies. Rams work the ball to Stinney in the corner. Averaging over 23 points per ball game. Coming in, coming off a 34-point effort against Southern Mississippi the other night. Rams again, working around the periphery. Here's Stinney. Now takes it into the lane. Double clutch. She's got it. Phil Gamble had to get off to the ball a little bit more there to help out. When Phil Stinney makes that move, he's got to step in and take a charge himself. You can't reach in. Big man's got good moves inside. Showed it there, and he gives his ball club their biggest edge in the game thus far. Here's Robinson. He's off the mark. Tipped up, no good, by DePriest. And Stinney comes down with it. Rams come into tonight's ball game, 23 and 11. Now they work it to John Thompson. Yes, there is another John Thompson in the basketball game. This one plays for Virginia Commonwealth, the transfer out of North Carolina State. Not quite as large as the one you're referring to, the head coach of the Georgetown Hoyas. Time winding down, shot clock shows 16 seconds. Rams very patient against this zone. UConn packing it inside. Now 10 seconds on the shot clock. Nice move inside. Cheek loses, and the Huskies come up with it. They've got a two-on-one if they hurry. Inside, it's Gamble. Has it partially blocked. Gets his own rebound. Puts it up. Is it good? Yes, and he's fouled. Now, I think we're going to get a travel call, Mike, by the inside official. He came in from... And it looked... We'll be back in a minute. Well, the Huskies blew a golden opportunity there to score two more points after the turnover here. They forced, they had a two-on-one, Terry. Well, the Huskies do a good job defensively, and they have to take it all the way down to the shot clock. And now you see Tate George penetrates. See the defensive man commit, then he makes the dish off. Great play right there in the dish. 
Gamble misses the layup, and I, you're not going to see his foot move, but I think both feet were moving a little bit. I think it was a good call by the official on the travel. After the timeout, Huskies come out full court pressure. They trail in the ball game by four, 15-44 remaining first half. And here's the changes that Calhoun has done. The 2-3 zone, now the full court pressure. Wilson just does beat the 10-second count across the timeline, and he'll set up the Ram offense. Get around the uh, perimeter. Here's Stinney. Now Wilson. Now John Thompson into the paint. Follows. No good. And the Huskies' Murray Williams comes down with it. Ahead to Tate George. Now to Robinson. Underneath they find the Priest. And he has it rejected. Wilson on the rejection. Finn Wilson really got up in the air on that. At the other end of the floor, the two guards for the Huskies cannot let the ball be penetrated. Here we see Lyman Dupree. There's a great head fake. Nice head fake, and look at the block come over. No body contact at all. Just an excellent block. Great help on the defense there for the Rams as DePriest had his man out of the play, but weak side help came and re rejected the ball there. Here's where Murray Williams inside. He misses. First shot that he's had an opportunity to take, and we come back the other way. Rams. Cheeks. Dumps it inside. Foul. Basket would have counted had it gone. Instead, it'll be a two-shot foul coming up by the trailer. And so often, that was Bruce Petaway who rebounded the ball at the other end and started the break, and he came down the floor and filled it right up and in. Let's watch it again as uh, Cheeks Here's comes good in. penetration. Cheeks comes in, and a nice dish off. Nice move to the basket, and he gets hit over the shoulder. But he started the whole thing by rebounding the ball at the other end. Good look by Cheeks to find him as he was the trailer. And now it's Petway averaging a little over four points per ball game on the line, and he misses. Unusual miss for the Rams. They're very good free throw shooting ball club. Well, they shoot at about seven, almost 74 percent from the uh, charity strike. Petway, however, not one of the good ones at about 54 percent. Second one coming up. UConn got to do a little bit better on the field goals. They've missed their last four. They're only shooting 40% from the field at this point. Petway gets one of two. And Vince Wilson is out. Into the ball game is Lionel Bacon, six-foot sophomore out of Louisville, North Carolina. Bacon averaging uh, nearly seven points per ball game. So Vince Wilson will get the early breather. 14-54 remaining first half. Huskies find themselves on the short end of an 8-4 count. And Virginia Commonwealth returns the favor. They come out with their 2-2-1 full court press. Underneath, nice pass by Robinson to Murray Williams. Great assist by Cliff Robinson. Could have gone up for the shot himself. Unselfishly hit the man down low for the basket. Huskies have also made a change. They've got Jeff King in the ball game. Replacing Lyman DePriest. So the Huskies go with the 6'11 King. Get a little bit more size inside against these Rams. Here's King battling for the ball. Gamble comes up with it. And we'll give it off to George. Take George. Directing traffic. Finds a man. It's Williams. It's That's Lyman. Okay. Good goal. Goal. Mike Polio really upset. I'm not sure whether it was his own people or at the official underneath the basket. But he really did a side step down that sideline. Here you're going to see. This is a super pass right off the dribble. What an excellent pass. And then he goes up, and you can see it. He deflects that. No question, it's a good call by the official. Now the Huskies have nodded the score at eight. And the fans getting back into the ballgame just a bit. Here's Cheeks left alone. Three-point range. He takes the two-pointer. Now dumps off to Bacon. And Bacon cans the 15-footer calmly off the bench. His first two-pointer, and VCU has regained the lead. They're shooting around 75%. That's why they have the lead they have in this ballgame, and they're also doing a fine job on the board. Tate George walks by Bacon. Rams started in the man-to-man, -man and they have stayed that way right throughout. Here's Robinson, breaks free over the pick. He's got it. And that's it, Mike. That's 1,000 points for Cliff Robinson. Came in with 994, needed a six. He's got him. And more importantly, on Jim Calhoun's mind, they tie the score at the Huskies. And now... Air ball taken down by King. Cliff Robinson, as he's got his thousand point, three for four, all outside jumpers. Huskies looking to go on top in the ball game for the first time since they led it two nothing. Here's George. He's fouled. Bacon got a piece of him as he was a little late, cutting him off at the foul line. And first personal on Lyle Bacon. Well, UConn just really spread the floor there in a 2-1-2. Oh, just a shuffle cut, something that's been around for 100 years in the game. 
and Tate was just open coming across. Hey, you see Jeff King. Jeff King. And then Tate comes right across, and there's the bump. 34 just can't get over the screen and in, bumps him. Inside on the inbound pass, Willie McLeod just in the ball game misses the easy two off the inbound pass from Tate George, and the score stays at 10 off. Under 13 minutes to go now, first half. Very warm here at the store's field house. It's been a warm day all day, and uh, the heat has stayed inside, and of course, 6,000 fans or so will continue to make it hot in here, and both coaches have gone to the bench early. UConn doing a good job. If you notice, one man plays the ball, the other four guys are in the paint area. They're saying, shoot it from the outside. Just like Phil Stenny did. He's one pointer. person that can do it. Foot was on the three-point circle. He's got four points in the ball game on two buckets, and he gives his ball club a two-point lead. Here's Gamble, breaks free, and he's got it. And just defensively, that's just a breakdown on the part of the Rams. Gamble wide open for the easy jumper from the foul line. Once again, we're tied. Inside, John Thompson, watched by George. Now, Bill Stinney playing way outside. Gives the bacon, he misses the fall away, and Jeff King comes down with it. Tried to find the outlet to Gamble, instead goes to take George. And George will move it into the front court. Gets it to Robinson. Jump is good. When you're hot, you're on fire. And that's what Cliff Robinson is now. Four out of five. All jumpers from the outside. He's got it going. He's got eight of the UConn 14 points. And the Huskies have a two-point edge. Second time in the ball game. Rams very patient, very composed out here at the UConn Fieldhouse despite the noise. And playing on the road. Inside, ball goes to Martin Henlon. Henlon loses it out of bounds. It'll be UConn ball, but we've got a timeout. We'll be back with more right after this. You know, well, that's far the Huskies and the Rams have traded baskets. And let's take a look at that last shot by Cliff Robinson. The big guy has got it going early, eight points. More than half his team's total. Well, he's a he's a 47% shooter. Here you see Tate George try to make the move. It's not there. It's a nice screen for Cliff Robinson. The defensive man not getting up. You cannot let a shooter like Cliff Robinson just take uncontested shots, and that's what he's taking tonight. He shoots 47% from the field. Well, the Rams come out with a little of the Huskies medicine. Full court pressure on the inbounds. Back in the ball game, starting guard Vince Wilson for the Rams. Jeff King handling against the pressure. Steve Peichel also in the ball game, and now a foul call. That one will go against Vince Wilson. Wilson got a piece of Peichel. And this is why the UConn Huskies are back in it, Mike. 7 for 12. At one point, they were shooting 40%. They've increased at 18 percentage points. They're back in this ball game now. They've got the lead. That last foul, really a dumb foul. You weren't even really trapping real hard. Mike scratching his head saying, come on, guys, if you're going to trap, just get in a good hard trap, but don't reach in. Now here's a trap. Jeff King looks underneath. He's got McLeod. He loses it, but King gets it right back for the Huskies. Fortunate mishandle there. Here's McLeod. Jump and got it. Huskies able to get some good open shots around the perimeter. The defense is real hard and aggressive, it seems like, the first two or three passes. But as the Huskies move the ball, the defense breaks down. Huskies with their biggest lead in the ball game, a four-point edge. Here's Wilson. Outside cheeks, three-pointer, no good. And Jeff King comes down with it. He's done a fine job for the Huskies since coming in the ball game. Michael will run the offense in place of Tate George as Jim Calhoun, the Connecticut coach, has numerous substitutions in there right now for the Huskies. Well, it's a warm night here, and I think it's a smart move on Coach Calhoun's part to get people in this ballgame. So in crunch time, guys are fresh and ready to play. Under 10 minutes now remaining first half. Huskies looking to add to a four-point edge. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Here's King. Makes the fake into the paint. He's got it! One quick dribble, a nice fake, and right into the paint area. Again, too many shots in the paint and open shots for the Huskies. The Rams have got to stop that. Eight in a row now, the Huskies have run off. Huskies come in off a 68% shooting performance on Monday night in their second round win over Louisiana Tech, and they continue their hot shooting here at home tonight. And a foul call on Steve Peichel. 
Double teaming down on Phil Stinney as he made the move and he get a piece of the arm. And that's the one thing guards have got to learn. When you double down, you don't want to reach in. You just want to get your body in there so the offensive man doesn't have any way to maneuver. You don't want to reach in. Marty Hinlin takes his seat. As you mentioned, it is warm in here. Both coaches using their bench early and frequently. Wilson to John Thompson. Stinney now goes to Wilson. Will take the three-pointer. It's short. And Steve Pikel does a nice job on the rebound and a foul call. I believe Wilson will pick up the personal. It'll be his second, third on the Rams here in the first half. Hey, you see the rebound just coming off to the side, and you see almost two guys. 35 gets a push, but Wilson, 30, is the first guy that pushes Pikel. And he gives the Huskies valuable time. He gets Gamble on the bench. He gets Kate George a blow. Steve Peichel can just come in and do that role playing for three to four minutes. That's a big help to the Huskies. And Tate George has come back in at the second guard or shooting position rather than the playmaking spot, which he usually occupies. Here's George inside, and he'll be called for steps. That now does the, not count. And that's the fourth turnover. And BCU, I don't understand. They come in at a ball game shooting 33% from the three point. They've already taken five shots. They're only one for five from three point. That's hurting them so far. Here's Stinney, way outside. Big guy, 6'8", 220 pounds, averaging nearly 24 points per ball game. He has scored just four thus far in the first half. Substitution in the ball game. Derek McGee handling the ball for the Rams. McGee out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, takes the three-pointer. He's got it. Now, they also say, Terry, you live with the three-pointer, you die by the three-pointer. So uh, that one cuts the UConn lead in half as Mike Polio gets three points off the bench in a hurry from Derek McGee. Why the fans love it, because he can get you back in a hurry if you're down. Robinson to Pikel. VCU back man to man. Take George. Here's the priest. Now to Pikel. Had the three-pointer, passes it up. Now he's stuck. Finds inside Willie McLeod, puts the move, and drops it home. And Steve Pico was stuck because the Huskies were standing around watching him. You've got to make a move. When a man loses his dribble, you've got to come and meet him. You can't stand and hope the ball is going to get to you. Huskies increase their lead to five with 740 remaining here first half. Rams in the corner to Bruce Pedway now underneath Stinney. Little hook shot by Stinney, picks up his third field goal, he's got six, and he brings the Rams to within three once again. We look at the Huskies now, their front court has really played tonight. They've got 18 of the 20 Husky points by that front court. Here's the Priest, puts the ball on the floor, he has it rejected, clean block, and McLeod saves it, but it picked off by Stinney. Four on two break. Back to Stinney, inside, has it knocked away. And it's saved by the Rams. Lyman DePriest really got up on that. The Ram bench up. They wanted a foul on that. But Lyman DePriest got all ball and rejected that cleanly. Here's Stinney three-pointer. No good. And a foul call. That'll go against the Rams. 6.54 remaining. First half. UConn three-point edge. We'll have more when we come back after this. You see the score, Huskies leading it by three, and that's thanks in part to their front court. They've had an excellent ball game thus far. We see Steve Peichel, nice penetration, and he's able to dish it off to Jeff King, who takes two dribbles right into the paint. If the Huskies are going to be allowed to do that, the Rams are going to be in for a tough night. Here you see again, Lyman DePriest takes the ball in, and you see the block, and then it dropped right off of uh, Lyman's head out of bounds. Thus far, Terry, we talked about the front guard for UConn. They have had a good ball game. They've scored 18 out of the UConn Huskies, 20 points. And they've got the 11 rebounds. And there you see the front score scoring right there. Well, at 18 to 9, there's a big difference. And, you know, when you've got a player of uh, Phil Stinney's caliber and the Huskies are outscoring them the way they are, the Rams are in a little bit of trouble. And also, the Huskies have out-rebounded BCU so far 11 to 5. Unusual because BCU is one of the leading rebounding teams in the country and the differential is over 8 per ball game. So Huskies doing a fine job up front. Here's Robinson. Jump is no good. Just short. And Chris Cheeks gets it ahead. 
to Derek McGee. Crowd wanted to travel. Instead, ball goes inside to Thompson, and nice left-hander by John Thompson for his first two-pointer. Lionel Bacon made a nice assist there, went up in the air, could have taken a jump shot himself, and saw the man open. The defensive man down low turned his back, thought that Bacon was going to take the jump shot. And foul called inside. I believe it'll go against Robinson. Officials caught Cliff. I think it was a good call. I think he was moving when he was trying to set that block and set up the jump shot. Once you go in there, you've got to set. You can't move. If that defensive man wants to get around you, you've got to hold your position. Sixth turnover for the Huskies. First personal foul on Robinson, fifth on the Huskies here in the first half. We've got six minutes remaining in the first 20 minutes of play. Rams, again, looking at a Husky zone defense. They'll move the ball around the perimeter. Thompson, back to Bacon, now the Cheeks, they go to Derek McGee, baseline, Trap puts it up, and he's got it, tough move, and good shot by Derek McGee to get his second field goal, he's got five points. Well, he was in among Carl Kimber on that one, but just went up, and uh, a little bit of a prayer, but it went home for him, and now we've had runs in his ball game. Huskies had eight in a row at one point, VCU six in a row. And the Rams retake the lead, one pointer, here's Gamble! And Mike, Phil Gamble, his three points this year is 68 for 168. He's made more this year than the entire Husky team did all of last season. As simple as uh, one, two, three, Huskies regain the lead. Thanks to Phil Gamble's first three-pointer of the ball game. And now Phil Finney in a hurry to get down low, travels, and the ball will go back over to the Huskies. Only the third turnover by uh, VCU, and the Huskies lead that category, the one you don't want to lead. Six to three. This is a fifth lead change. There have been three ties early in this ball game, and uh, it's heating up, and uh, so is the weather in here. A tight one thus far in the first half. Murray Williams to Jeff King, left alone. He's got it. Again, another uncontested shot. No one guarding Jeff King as he took that shot. Jeff King off the bench with four points thus far, first half. The Rams looking to cut that four point edge. Thus far, a lot of their points have come from the outside. Now, here's Thompson, works his way inside, pump fake, gets everybody up in the air, he's fouled, and it's good. And Jeff King swatting at the ball. If you just don't block that many shots, you've got to plant your feet, play good defense, take a charge, just try to alter the shot. We look for the pass inside, he turns, makes a little fake and steps in, and he gets Robinson in here, and watch King, you can see that left arm swats at him. Instead of just going straight up, trying to distract him, cause him a little bit of problem, the ball goes in, and now they go to the charity strike. And John Thompson, very good from the free throw line, but not there. He misses that one, he's shooting 78%. And so it stays a two-point Husky advantage. UConn with the basketball, Cliff Robinson, Leading all scores, eight points thus far in the ball game. Take George. Rams have been predominantly man to man. Inside, Murray Williams misses the two, and VCU comes down with the ball on the break. It's a four on three. Here's Cheeks, two pointer. Chris Cheeks on the line, and, and just the way you like to see. We're tied at 25. Just the way you like to see that break run. You rebound it, you outlet it, you get it in the middle of the floor, you hit a wing for the jump shot. So back and forth we go. Fourth tie in the ball game. Huskies looking to set up the offense. Tate George will direct traffic. Now George on the floor. Spin move. He's no good with it. And Stinney comes down with another rebound. And here comes Bacon ahead. It goes to McGee. McGee. Fended off by Gamble. Might have been a foul there. And now Chris Cheeks. Three-pointer. No good. Taken down by Williams. Almost stolen away, re-controlled by Gamble, uh, Tate George rather, and fouled by McGee. And Jim Calhoun, Mike, all over the official on this side, saying you had the angle, you were right there in front of the play, and you didn't make the call, the other official had to. 3.14 remaining, we continue to go back and forth. Thus far, nothing's been settled. We'll be back with more after this. Well, as most good rebounding teams can do, they can run the fast break, and the Rams did it to tie up the ball game. Let's take a look as Lionel Bacon comes down with it. Well, he comes down the center of the floor, and he sees the man open on the wing. Just a picture-perfect fast break. The only thing you need is the bank shot. In this case, he just put it home without using the glass. But that's exactly how you want that break run. UConn has to do a little bit better job in transition defense. 
the last, I'll say, three or four minutes, they've been slow getting back down the floor. Jim Calhoun on a couple of those players. You've got to bust it and get back down the floor. And the Huskies break against the full court pressure. Tate George, one on two. He misses. And it's taken down by McGee. Huskies ran a set play out of bounds, and uh, they got the two-point attempt by Tate George, and now the Rams, with the basketball, will try to set something up to take the lead in the ballgame once again. Bacon watching out front. McGee goes inside, has it knocked away and stolen. Fourth turnover in the ballgame for the Rams and the Huskies. Phil Gamble goes to Robinson. Now Gamble left alone. Three-pointer is going to be short. Rebound inside. Williams had a hand on it, and he was hammered. Well, we talked about it, that Williams has really got to give Cliff Robinson a help on the board because there are some wide bodies in there, and he's got to go in there and do the job. You see Cliff kick it back out. Gamble a three-pointer. And there he is, Murray, just going up, and he gets hammered. He gets sandwiched between two people and knocked to the floor on that. I think Chris Cheeks was looking for a foul on Williams because he used an elbow to uh, get a little advantage on the rebound, but the foul will go against Chris Cheeks, his first. And here's Gamble, another three-point attempt. Misfires. King is there, puts it up, and he rolls it home. And Jeff King really did a fine job on that. Murray Williams, 4.4 rebounds in the ball game right now. He's got to continue to help, and Jeff King has got to do exactly what he did there, come in and give him a lift on those boards. Jeff King has got his season's average already here in the first half, six points, as he gives his ball club a two-point advantage with two minutes remaining first half. Inside, Thompson kicks it out to Bacon. Jump, he's got it. Well, when you take it inside, usually that guard goes down and doubles, and that man is open, and the big man inside has got to kick it out quickly. That's what happened there. Third three-pointer in the ball game for the Rams. They take a one-point lead thanks to Lionel Bacon's three-pointer. Robinson breaks free inside. He's got it. Just a great job. You know, Robinson's just got it going tonight. He wants to go to the Big Apple next week. He said, get me the ball on the block. They can't stop me inside. They may be wide bodies, but I'll go up over them. Ten points in tonight's ball game this far for Cliff Robinson. And that gets the crowd into it, Michael. With a minute 22, it's an important time for the Huskies. Stinney, tough shot over the six foot 10 inch Jeff King. He's got another two. And you know that's a season ball club. And Phil Stinney says, hey, you can go up and make those dunks. I'm going to come right back and answer it. Robinson, watched by Thompson. King, now George. George got the baseline, puts it up, no good. And VCU comes down with it. The Rams, Phil Stinney, all over the court thus far, first half. Derek McGee, Lionel Bacon will settle down the Rams. They lead it by one with 45 seconds remaining first half. There's about 15 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock, and so Stinney says, I can't hold it the rest of the half, so I'll take another two-pointer. He's got 10 points, and his ball club stretches the lead to three, as you see there. And the shot clock is off, so I would think that you'll see the Huskies now just come down and work it for get that last shot. Got the floor spread. Cliff Robinson with 19 seconds. Tate George out front, watched by Bacon. Huskies will start to move with 10. 10 seconds now, first half. Ball knocked away from Gamble. Seven seconds. They go to King. Back to Gamble. Left alone is Williams, three-pointer, no good. Rebound taken down by the Rams, and that ends the first half of play. A tight one here in Storrs, Connecticut, and the Rams very happy to be leading on the road by three. We'll have halftime coming up for you right after this. Husky Pep Band trying to get their ball club excited for the second half. Their team hasn't been this far in a postseason tournament in some 24 years since the 1964 edition made it to the quarterfinals of the NIT. And as far as the Virginia Commonwealth Rams are concerned, they're excited. First time they've ever been in the NIT. And you can see from the statistics, it's been a very close first half. Well, certainly the rebound's 15 for UConn. They're out rebounding. They're fifth in the nation, BCU. UConn's out rebounding. That's an important one. Turnover, 6-4, to four, so not a badly played game in terms of that. One important stat that we didn't have up there, points in the paint. 18 points in that blue area for UConn, 12 points for VCU. If UConn can continue that, I think that will go a long way in determining the outcome of this ballgame. 
Mike, one other thing we'll point out. VCU, in the first half of their ball game so far, they've scored at 36 points in the first half of the game during the course of the season. They've got 32 tonight. However, in the second half, they've come out and scored 44.8. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens here in the second half if the Huskies can keep them down. Rams are also 17 and 4 in ball games they led at the half. So we'll see if that statistic can hold on or whether the Yukon Huskies, who have a tremendous home record, can hold on here in the second half, come from behind. Just underway. The Husky fans up and waving the blue and white. Here's McGee. Corner jump is away. In and out. Rebounded Thompson, strong move. He misses everything, and now a foul. Well, that's a case of those wide bodies in there. There were three BCU shirts in there. The UConn Huskies were behind the black-shirted Virginia Commonwealth players, and that's something that they cannot allow to happen. And it's tough getting around those guys. They're not real big in terms of 6'11", 7 feet. They're all 6'7", six, 6'8", six, but they're wide. John Thompson, for example, 6'7", 240. And he's every ounce of that as he goes to the free throw line to shoot two. In the first half of play, Thompson was on the line once. He was 0 for 1. Only had three foul shots in the first half. And Virginia Commonwealth was 1 for 3. UConn did not take one. And there's Thompson shooting into the UConn cheering section. Cam's the first one. And that's a free throw shooter that uh, Mike Polio would like to see. He's 70 for 90 coming in at 78%. So he's a fairly good free throw shooter. Four point edge for the Rams. And Thompson misses the second. And Tate George will control for the Huskies. They start Jeff King in the front court along with Murray Williams. Cliff Robinson up front in the back court. It's Tate George and Phil Gamble. This is Williams. Jim Calhoun up for the bigger lineup with Jeff King standing at 6'10". Here's Robinson, breaks free, wide open, he's got it. That is patient offense, excellent basketball. They're running what's called BC offense, two guards out, three across the baseline, a lot of away screening and down screening, looking for that ball to get in the paint area for the easy shot. Exactly what you want to do to start a half. Here's McGee for the Rams, to Cheeks. Outside, Bacon. Lionel Bacon's got five points in the ball game, including one three-pointer. Here's Cheeks, now to Steine. He's jumped from the corner, no good. Rebound is up and controlled by the Huskies. Looking to break, and now Tate George will slow it down as the Rams get back quickly on defense. Crowd back into the ball game for the Huskies. Gamble breaks free off the pick. He's got it. And there's that good down screen again off that BC offense. Jeff King at 6'10 is a good screener, and Gamble comes right off it wide open, and the Huskies get right in and tie it up. Important series for the Rams. Just underway, second half, 18-10 remaining in the ball game. Outside, Cheeks left alone. Steps inside the three-point circle, miss. And the rebound taken down by Tate George. And nice my job by Jeff King. He couldn't get the rebound, but tapped it over to one of his teammates. Huskies trying to regain the lead. Murray Williams. Watched by Cheeks, now Jeff King. To George, directing traffic, looking inside for Robinson. Robinson watched by Thompson. He breaks free, short jump, no good, and Thompson comes back to pick off the rebound. And that's their first miss. They were two for two, the Huskies, at that point. And that would have brought the crowd to its feet if they could have scored then. Picked away by Gamble. Two on two. Here's Gamble to Tate George, but a walking violation will go against Phil Gamble. He was undecided, and... Causes the seventh UConn turnover right there. Well, he knew he wanted to be in the middle of the floor. He knew he had somebody filling that lane. Nice defensive play down here at this end. He just a reach in and a, a nice swipe by Phil Gamble. He tries to center the ball, which he does, but he's undecided now. Take it in himself, and he really could have been called for a charge, but he's lucky to get away with the walk first. They're still tied at 33, early stages, second half. As the Rams bring back Vince Wilson, they take Lionel Bacon and Derek McGee out of the ball game, who were not starters, and they put their starters back in. That's Bruce Petway. Now Wilson. Huskies open in a zone here in the second half. Cheeks. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Inside Petway. It's good, and he's fouled. And Jeff King again leaving his feet. He had pretty good position. 
but he opened up a little bit and let that offensive man take it into him and then went off the floor. You see King, not bad position, but there he goes, up in the air. And the foul has committed. Good offensive move. And Jeff would just hold his ground, keep his feet, put two nails in those toes and keep him on the floor. Well, he does have the height advantage inside as uh, Petway stands 6'7". He stands at 6'10". So that is the Cardinal sit inside going for that head fake. And Petway made the nice offensive move to draw the foul. Second personal on Jeff King. Not a nice birthday present for King, but uh, unfortunately for him, he picks up the personal and sends Petway to the line. And he's got it. Four points in the ball game for Bruce Petway. In the game now comes Lionel Bacon back in. And I think we're going to see this pressure for most of the second half now. The Virginia Commonwealth come out. You know, it's hot in here. It's a good thing to put up the pressure a little bit. It's all over after tonight. So go home exhausted, but go home with a win. Robinson picks off Bacon. UConn fans and Jim Calhoun, one of the foul calls. Didn't get one, and the UConn Huskies with the basketball trail it by three. Here's Robinson inside. He puts it up off the glass. That would have been good had it gone instead of foul call. Well, Jimmy Calhoun really does a good job of getting that official to know he, he likes or dislikes the call. He wanted that. Now you see Mike Polio down the other end. But Cliff Robinson again, another strong move and where into the paint. Well, actually, they uh, said he was fouled before the shot, so the strictest shot by Robinson was not accounted, and the Huskies have the basketball, trailing by three. And VCU now in the zone on the out-of-bounds play. They played man-to-man -man all the way, but they zone out-of-bounds. Here's Gamble, three-pointer. He's short, and it's taken down by Cheeks, and the Rams want to run. They've got a man, Wilson. He goes baseline, he slips, and he'll be called for step. And that may be a question of the moisture in here on that floor. There was nobody around him. Tate George smartly let him go. And the official now asked him if he's all right on that. The sixth turnover by VCU. But he was really all alone. He comes down and Tate kind of just lets him go by. Doesn't commit any foul. And he just slides. He had the opening and uh, he was going to take it. But he just couldn't keep his footing. And so that turnover gives the ball back to the Huskies. After a quick start, Huskies have slowed down here in the second half. We approach the 16-minute mark in the ball game. Here's Gamble. And Phil Gamble's got to give him some offensive lift. Those shots are there for him. There he's working hard to come off that screen and get it. Huskies back to within one. Rams Lionel Bacon will direct traffic. Phil Stani in the corner. Back to Bacon. Takes the three-pointer. Takes advantage of a pick by Cheeks. Now in the corner they go. The Petway. Wilson. Looking inside, has it stripped away and taken by the Huskies, Jeff King. Nice job by Cliff Robinson. Jeff King, a primary defender there, but Cliff Robinson came over to help out and got a hand on the ball. Tate George, eight assists so far in the ball game to Gamble. No good. Jeff King, nice rebound. Jeff, he's got it. Happy birthday, Jeff. You're having a great night here for the Huskies, and they needed someone to come in and give Cliff Robinson that lift on the board. He's certainly doing it. Huskies get that lead. Crowd back in it. We continue to seesaw here at the Yukon Fieldhouse, and that got the fans back in the ballgame. Here's Wilson. Cheeks will take the jump. It'll be short, partially blocked, and King comes down with it. Huskies turning it up a notch on defense. And Jeff King, Mike, four for four from the floor, six rebounds, eight points. Off the bench tonight for the Huskies. He's done a fine job. Got his ball club out in front with 1440 remaining in the game. Gamble. Now take George. George got an opening inside and a foul. The foul will be going against Phil Sonny. And Jim Calhoun calling some set plays there. You saw an awful lot of ball movement, some screens being set, some down screens. Take George going down and screening, coming back to get the ball. They're really working their half-court offense very well. You see George come in, you see him go up, almost double punch it, and you see him get hit right on the shoulder. Only the first personal on Phil Stani and the second on the Rams here in the second half. And that'll send Tate George to the free throw line. Excellent free throw shooter hitting nearly 80% of his shots. Thus far in the ball game, uh, he is scoreless, which is sort of surprising. Well, he really contributes in so many ways. And it's nice for that point guard as he converts that one to get some scoring in there. But they've got good scoring out of Robinson and Gamble and Jeff King, etc. So Tate's job really is control that half court offense, get people in the right spots. If they're not there, pull that ball back out and get them in position. He's done that very well. Coming in, averaging nearly 10 points per ball game. More
more than five assists per ball game is a key cog in the UConn offense. Fourteen thirty remaining here in this ball game, and the Huskies have taken a three-point edge. It's their biggest lead in the second half, and we'll have more coming up from Storms, Connecticut, when we return after this. That's just part of the big crowd here at the UConn Fieldhouse. Let's take a look at the, some of the action. Jeff King has had an outstanding night. Well, we see King get around half around, and then Cliff Robinson helps out, and then Jeff finally picks up the loose ball. And now you're going to see an offensive rebound. Look at that. He just takes that right away from the Virginia Commonwealth player and squares up and buries it. You know, maybe he can have another birthday next week. Crowd has gotten back into this ball game as the Huskies have taken a three-point edge. They have shot four out of seven here in the second half. Virginia Commonwealth shooting only 17% at this point. Well, 17 percent, as you can see right there, you just can't beat anyone shooting 17 percent. So they've really got to get into their half-court offense to have a little more patience. Steiny inside, Petway puts it up, no good, but a foul. And that's exactly how you want to do it. When you're not shooting well, you want to take the ball into the paint area, see if you can draw the foul. Hopefully the basket goes in, you go to the foul line. So Virginia Commonwealth there executing very well. UConn right now on a 6-0 run. Inside There's again. a dump inside, nice dump inside, and you see Tate George gets over there. He really gets himself up in the air, but no question about the foul. So Pepe will be on the line to shoot two. He's got the first. And he doesn't make a lot of them. He's only shooting 53%, so one for two, basically, uh, during the course of the season. Second one coming up here can cut the UConn lead to one. 14-18 remaining in the ball game. And he's got both. And the Rams will put the full court pressure on after the free throws. Robinson having some trouble. Drops it off to Tate George. Now Tate George wants a timeout. Smart play by George. And they only had two seconds before the 10-second violation would have been called. Well, they got it to 37. And that's, again, the smart of a good player. Now, Tate George, you don't think... He's going to score a lot of points, but he's a smart player. UConn will have the ball when we come back in just a moment. Stay with us. It's been a game of surges, and thus far, the UConn Huskies out in front by one. They're on a 6-2 tear here in the second half to take that one-point edge. 14-09 remaining in the ball game, and the Huskies will inbound and again face that full-court pressure. Well, basketball is certainly a game of momentum, and it's gone both ways, and the uh, Rams getting a lift tonight. Bruce Petway only comes into the ballgame getting four points. He's got six already in this game. Here's Chris Cheeks watching Gamble. Now to Tate George. He'll take it over the timeline. Watched by Lionel Baker. The Rams have played that tough man-to-man -to -man defense throughout the ballgame. Willie McLeod in the ballgame for the Huskies. Taking out Murray Williams for a breather. Also, Jeff King out. Here's Robinson. Jumper, no good, but a foul call. That was an obvious one as Robinson had the clear shot, and I believe it was Petway who came across and got him on the arm. Again, just good half-court execution, and this is something that both teams are going to have to do a, an excellent job on. It's really going to be the team that executes in the half-court. Neither team has really got any fast-break points tonight, one or two here or there. Second shots even have not been a factor. It's been the execution of half-court offense. Jim Calhoun sweating a little bit as the, the crowd of almost 6,000 here doing the same thing as Robinson goes to the line. Not a great free throw shooter, averaging about 67% from the line, but having a nice night tonight. You mentioned Jim Calhoun, Terry. He's got to be happy with the pace of this ball game as Robinson misses the first. The Rams come in averaging nearly 80 points a game or 10 points a game more than UConn does. So when UConn's in a lower scoring game, obviously it'll be more to their favor. One thing I'm sure he was concerned about was the transition and getting the Huskies to get back defensively and don't give up those easy points. Well, there's two easy ones from the free throw line that Cliff Robinson won't be able to chalk up. Rams with the basketball and a whistle. I believe that'll uh, just be an official. Uh, Bill Gamble, I think, kicked it. And then we got a reset of the 45-second shot clock. Stoppage of play gives the ball back to the Rams with 13.30 on the clock. It's been a tight one throughout. Huskies lead it by one. And here's a jumper by Bacon. 
no good. Would have been a three-pointer. And Tate George ahead to McLeod. No good. Too high. McLeod fights for the ball. Knocks it back to George. And the Huskies get a break and get the ball back. We just talked about fast breaks. That's the first one in a while that the Huskies have even looked for. And they got a break because they re recovered it. Robinson launched by Petway. Has it knocked away. And now Tate George. Here's Lyman to Priest. Plenty of time on the shot clock for the Huskies. 20 seconds as they go inside. Robinson, turn around, jump. He puts it way up. It's good, and he's fouled. Well, Cliff Robinson certainly happy. Mike Polio over on the sidelines. He's really up in the air, upset about it. And Cliff, when it's going right, it just goes. That thing had no chance to go in the basket. Shouldn't have gone in the basket. And you see the pass inside. Cliff looks baseline. It's not there. He turns around, gets hit. Throws it high in the air, and it comes. And look at that reaction. Is he excited or what? Well, we've just been informed that over 4,800 people we in see. the fieldhouse saw that one and saw it go in. And look at that reaction again. He throws that one down there, and he says, I got it going tonight. That's an all-time fieldhouse record here at the University of Connecticut. 4,800. They've got them stuffed into every seat that's possible. Well, 4,800 is the official. I'm sure we got a few more. They can't report any more than that. Robinson on the line to try to complete the three-point play. And he does. He throws that rainbow up on the foul shot also. 15 points in the ball game for Cliff Robinson. He gives UConn a four-point edge here in the ball. Out of bounds. Off the Huskies, it'll be Rams' ball. And that's the kind of play you really want. You see Jim Calhoun talking to the official. He wanted that. Why? His offense got something, and then all of a sudden it picked up the defense. They almost got another turnover and a steal. Nate George. Steve Peichel in the ball game now for the Huskies. Placing Phil Gamble, who will take a breather. An important possession right now for Virginia Commonwealth. They're down for plenty of time, but if they don't score here and the Huskies do, the crowd's going to get into it, and all of a sudden the clock might become a little bit of a factor. Here's Chris Cheeks. He goes to the basket hard, and a foul will go against UConn. Willie McLeod will pick it up. That'll be only the fourth UConn foul here in the second half. Well, we haven't seen either team go to the charity strike much at all in this ball game, and the pace of it is right now. We won't see it. Now we'll get a look and see if Willie is moving. Boy, that's a tough call. I, I think if I'm Willie, I'm saying the official. I think I was planted on that one. Personal goes against McLeod, his first in the ball game. Gives the ball back to the Rams. Full 45 seconds on the shot clock. There's Bacon. Derek McGee. Petway has it knocked away on the floor, and it's controlled by the Rams. Steiny puts it in and over his head. And Phil Steiny telling you he can score any way you want. He's got 12 points in the ball game, cuts the UConn lead in half. And the Huskies have the boss basketball right back. Steve Peichel and Tate George in the backcourt. And VCU now changing up. They're out of that man-to-man. -man. They're in the 2-3 zone. Michael, George left alone, goes inside. Robinson is fouled. They had him double team. Chris Cheeks in front, Petway behind, and Chris Cheeks will be called for the personal as he grabs him on the arm. Well, Michael did a good job of penetrating, caused the defense to collapse, kicked it off to Tate George, who was really open for a jumper because they had already doubled down on Cliff Robinson. They know where the Huskies want to go, the bread and butter man. Big hand comes up for Jeff King as he reports back in the ball game, replacing Lyman the Priest. King off the bench tonight. Excellent ball game. Eight points, six rebounds, and he's been a force inside for the UConn Huskies. And now UConn will spread it just a bit. They have a two-point edge and are looking to work the ball inside to Cliff Robinson. Here's Tate George. George to Robinson. He'll take the baseline. Jump. No good. In and out. And it's Bacon on the break. He's got cheeks inside. Ellie, you contended for Steiny too far. Well, it was a good look, but certainly the pass was no way that he had a shot at getting it. Second half turnovers, Virginia Commonwealth three and Connecticut only one. They both have seven for the game. UConn leads by two. They get the basketball back after that fourth turnover for Virginia Commonwealth. Also back in the ballgame, John Thompson, 6'7", senior out of Brunswick, Virginia for the VCU Rams playing out of the Sun Belt Conference. They were runners up this year to North Carolina Charlotte. 
Huskies not as successful in their league play, and here's Steine gets a personal foul. That's his third foul, Mike, and that could certainly be a factor with 10.52 to go, and they cannot afford to lose him. They've got some other big people in there, but here's the pass. You see Jeff King throwing that cross-court pass, and that's a nice tackle. Well, what caused that is Tate George came to the ball to receive the pass, and as so cut off the possible steal from Phil Stoney, resulting in the personal foul. So Stoney with three, 16 fouls on the Rams here in the second half as we approach the midway point of this second half. Here's Robinson, finds McLeod, three, puts it way off the glass, and he's got it. That's a nice triangle against that zone. You get a guy on the wing in the corner in the high post, and you just keep moving the ball around. And when that ball goes high, you look low right away. Good dump down. UConn back out in front, 5-4. And a foul will be going uh, against the Huskies, Jeff King, as he was holding John Petway inside the two fighting for position. King was caught for the foul, again, away from the ball. We've got 15 players on both sides between them here with three fouls in this ball game. King now has three. So an awful lot of people with three fouls in the game. And as it winds down here, that could be a factor. Jeff King has three, and Stoney has three for the Rams. Here's Stoney from the corner. He's got three more, but this time on the plus side. And you just got to get out on a shooter like that. That's just lazy defense there on the part. I think Cliff Robinson should have got out. If that pass is being made, you've got to react. You can't wait until he catches it. You're going to be too late. Big bucket for the Rams. Pulls them to within one as we hit the midway point of the second half. Ten minutes remaining in the ballgame. Gamble back in for the Huskies. McLeod, now King. Gamble left alone, finds Peichel for the three-pointer. He's got it! And Phil Gamble made the penetration against the zone. you got to go inside out, exactly what he did. First points in the ball game for Steve Peichel. Gives the Huskies a four-point lead right back. And it gets the fans in the ball game. And we'll see if BCU looks to Phil Stein. He scored the last five points. He's got three more. He's scored the last eight, including two three-pointers. He's got 18 points in the ballgame. Keeps his ball club in it. This one will go down to the wire. Neither team giving an inch. Gamble. Watched by Cheeks. McLeod way outside. Now Pico. Gamble. Now Robinson. Left alone for the jump. No good. But beautiful tip in by Willie McLeod high above the rim. And he's got two more. McLeod playing a nice ball game for the Huskies. He's got eight points off the bench coming in, only averaging five. And that just shows you that rebounding is positioning and desire. I'm going to go get it. I don't care how big you are. Huskies back out in front by three. Here's Steine. He's been the senior Commonwealth offense. Last several times down the floor, misses the three-pointer there, and the personal will be picked up by Steve Peichel. Chris Cheeks had a good offensive rebounding position. Peichel bumped him, and now give the ball back to the Rams. Both teams with six personal fouls, so the next foul by either team puts the opponents into the bonus situation, and that could be a big factor going down the stretch of a close ball game. Here's Thompson. Bacon. Watch by Gamble, goes inside, turn around, Jeff Steine, no good foul call on Cliff Robinson. And Cliff just got to stand there. You don't want to knock him to the floor. That shot wasn't going in. Just stand there, hold your ground, try to just get a hand in his face, distract him a little bit, but don't commit a foul. You see Cliff Robinson just go over. He's got a left hand on him a little bit. The shot goes, and now watch the foul with the body after the shot. You know, the ball was away. So now you just put him on the charity strike. Denny on the line, he'll be shooting two. He's got 18 points in the ball game. Eight and he goes here in the second half, and he scored the last eight points that uh, the Rams have put on the board. And he's an excellent free throw shooter, 83% coming in. 19 points now, and the last nine points. So the Huskies have to find a way to shut down Phil Stenny. And Stenny has a chance to bring his ball club back to within one, and he does not. This is, but it's rebounded. Off the Rams to the Huskies. Rams had a shot at it. They couldn't pick it up off the floor. Again, Jeff King stayed with it. Had it, lost it, and recovered it back again. 
Huskies slowing it down, looking at a man-to-man -man defense. Marty Henlon, big 6'10 junior, in the ball game for the Rams. And they had some pretty good size in there now. It's important, important right now, Mike, I think, for the Huskies to set good screen. Missed inside. McLeod follows. Again, no good. McLeod had two golden opportunities slip by as he had the inside shot, missed it, and then missed the, the follow-up. And now the Rams have a chance to tie it up or perhaps go ahead with a three-pointer. Bacon left alone. He's got a three-pointer in this ballgame, so we know he can shoot from out there. Chris Cheeks back to Bacon. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebound. Thompson resets the 45-second clock. They go to Cheeks inside. Good move on the baseline. He's got it. Well, right around Jeff King, who just held his ground. But you've got to give up that baseline. You're going to be in trouble. And that's exactly what happened to Jeff. Well, not it up again. Gamble changes that in a hurry. Bill Gamble's got 11 points. Transition a, offense. Two point in. Just got back down the floor before BCU players did. Had the nice easy shot. Inside. Henlon off the stun. He missed. And he's got his first two in the ball game. And once again, they're all tied up. And now a foul go against Phil Stani. That's his fourth. A big foul on the big man for BCU. And he doesn't like it. And he tells the official. And now head coach Mike Polio calling him over to tell him he's got four personal fouls and probably take him out of the ball game. Well, he knows it and he's sitting down, but again, a senseless foul. Here he is in the backcourt and he just commits the foul. You see Steve Peichel bringing it up and you watch him just body up to him right there. He wasn't in front of him at all. There was no chance that was going to be a charge. It was an easy block, easy call by the official and with 6.53, almost seven minutes, that really hurts the Rams. And it also puts the Huskies in the bonus situation. Peichel will be on the line to shoot one and one. Thus far this year, Steve is uh, shooting 65%. He's got the first. So the bonus shot will be coming up. Michael with four points in tonight's ball game off the bench for the Huskies. All here in the second half. Second one coming up. Steve is a sophomore out of Bristol, Connecticut. He's got both. And you count five out of seven here in the second half from the charity strike. 6.53 remaining in the Huskies. Lead it by two, and they've got a standing ovation here at the Fieldhouse. Back with more after this. Huskies fans into the ball game now. They're doing the wave here at Stores. Their ball club holding a slight two-point advantage. And, of course, the Rams will counter with their cheerleading section as well. As over... 4,800 people jammed in here at the field house to watch this quarterfinal round game between the Huskies and the Rams. Jim Calhoun clapping because he's happy. His ball club's ahead thus far, but it's a tight one, and you can see the concern, and Mike Polio still working on the officials. Well, both teams have played well here tonight. UConn the edge in field goal percentage right now, 53-40, and also in rebounds, 25-21. Virginia Commonwealth one in four in games where they've been out-rebounded. UConn with the full court pressure. McGee might have got away with a walk. On the break, Thompson is hit from behind. Robinson and DeVries were there. We'll have to wait to see who the foul goes against. Foul goes against Lyman DeVries as we take a look you again. You see the good penetration and the dish off. Cliff Robinson from behind could be called on him. And you've got Lyman DeVries coming in. I think the foul is going to be called on Lyman. You see it again. There's Cliff. Put that left hand on but Lyman comes in with that right side of his body. That's just good offense against good defense. Nice, good full-court pressure by the Huskies. And BCU saying, hey, we're not just going to be content to bring it over half court. We're going to take the ball to the basket against it. Thompson having his troubles from the free throw line. One for four tonight. He's a big 6'7 senior out of Brunswick, Virginia. Started his college career at North Carolina State in the Atlantic Coast Conference before transferring over to Virginia Commonwealth. And he's one for five as he misses two. And that's unusual. He comes in shooting 78%. He's not too happy with himself. And that's a big break for the Huskies. Two free throws missed. Keeps them up on top by two. Here's Gamble to George. George, watched by Wilson. Now, the Priest kicks it outside Robinson. Back to Lyman, the Priest. 
Huskies, plenty of time on the shot clock, 15 seconds. They work the ball in the corner, gamble underneath. He misses, gets his own rebound, pump fake, and he's fouled. Just good hard work by Phil Gamble in there all by himself. Huskies lucky on that one. There were four Huskies standing there watching Phil Gamble. Didn't give him any help. You'll see Phil, he makes a great move into the basket. Look at that pump fake. But he's the only white shirt. You've got Lyman on the other side. Where's the rest of the Huskies? Where's Phil Gamble? Where's Cliff Robinson? They're standing out there watching, admiring the work of Phil Gamble. They got to get in there and help him out. Al Gamble will go to the free throw line for the first time tonight. He's got 11 points in the ball game. And these are big free throws for the Huskies. Shoots it at 78%. They lead it by two, and he can increase that lead right here. He's got it. And for the first time at the line, didn't seem rusty at all. Got the second one coming up here. His ball club leads it by three. He can match their biggest lead here in the second half. For the free throw here, and he's got it. Got to turn it up right now and not defensively. The next two or three minutes, the Huskies got to maintain this lead to get it. On the other side, the Rams have got to show good patience. This is not the time to panic and take three pointers and quick shots. Execute your half court offense. Huskies have changed up defenses, leaving Chris Cheeks alone. Jump is on the way, and he's got it. He comes into the ball game, second leading scorer on the Rams club, averaging 17 and a half points per ball game. Second three-pointer of the game, he's got 10, and more importantly, he puts his team right back in it. And Phil Stennis got hurt on that play. He's really favoring that left knee, which has got a brace on it, came down the floor limping. We'll see if that's going to be a factor. Donnie inside watching Lyman DePriest now. Here's Murray Williams, watched by Chris Cheeks, DePriest. Campbell in the corner, now Robinson. And the jump is up and good by Cliff Robinson. We haven't heard from him in quite a while, but that time got the good inside shot and played it off the glass. And BCU, 6 for 10, and uh, UConn, 8 for 10. Both teams shooting very well right now on the free throw line. Huskies back out in front by three. Five minutes exactly remaining in the ball game. It remains tight in this quarterfinal game between the Rams and the Huskies looking for a berth in the semifinals at Madison Square Garden next Tuesday. Here's Chris Cheeks jumps off the mark and Robinson comes down with it. Cliff Robinson, you get the feeling that he's starting to reassert himself in this ball game. Well, he's 8 for 13 from the field, 17 points. He's played very well. This is the time for him to come back alive. Gamble made a nice play just to recover his footing and get the ball. And now foul call on Derek McGee out in front. That'll send UConn to the line to shoot one and one. Not where you want to commit a foul. If they get in the paint area and you're inside and you're battling on the board, that's one thing. But when you're 25, 26 feet away from the basket and you reach in, it's just not a smart foul. You put people on the foul line. Now Gamble will go back to the free throw line. He connected on two just moments ago. Let's take a look again as fouls committed by Here you see the defensive uh, man just comes out, Mike, and grabs him. I mean, he really had no shot at the basketball at all. And Mike Polio leaped off the bench at it as if to say, what are you doing? Think about where we are in the game at this point. Here's Gamble. Gets the roll. That's a good home cook and roll for Phil Gamble as uh, he's three for three from the free throw line. He'll have the bonus coming up here. Eight for ten from that charity stripe. An important statistic as we go down the stretch. Gamble again. He's got it. Gamble has hit all four of his free throws tonight. And the Huskies have their biggest lead here in the second half. A five-point advantage. Again, patience on the offense for Virginia Commonwealth. They can't rush anything. They've got to work real hard and then go to the offensive board. Huskies got to block out. Here's Steiny inside to Wilson. Blocked by Robinson, but a foul. That time Robinson came across, thought he had a good block, picks up his third personal as Wilson came in, thought he was open, and Robinson... It's called for the foul if we take a look at it from the floor. Right, you see Cliff going over, and we get ball, but we get body. No left question. Hit. The left side, and, and Cliff really wanted that one. He worked real hard. There you go. The shot's going up. From here, right, you see a little bit of the hip. The first shot, though, you could really see that hip in the contact. Good call. Hey, you got three guys blowing the whistle out there. They're going to get pretty good angles. Uh, Wilson shooting into the UConn student section, and he misses. 
Not an easy thing to do, to stand at that line and look at all those Husky fans waving those blue and white pom-poms. It's intimidating, there's no question about it. Tickets, of course, Terry, were on a premium for this ball game. They had 5,000 students looking to purchase 1,000 tickets. And to take a look at what Wilson is shooting into here. I'm glad that's him and not me, because he's really got to concentrate. That is such a distraction for a player, but you've got to go and block it all out. You've got to go up there, get a couple of bounces on the floor, and think about it. Here's King ahead of the field, decides to hold it back as Virginia Commonwealth and two men streaking back to defend. And the Huskies leading it by four, under four minutes to go now in the ball game. Here's Jeff King, back to Tate George. George upset with Robinson, I think, not running what was called. Now Murray Williams. Jeff King breaks free, foul line jump, he's got it. Again, that's a half-court execution. Cliff Robinson coming from the low post off that down screen, wide open for the easy shot. A big timeout by VCU, they need it. The crowd is up and loves it. And UConn has their biggest lead in the second half. Three and a half remaining in the ball game. Back in a moment. Well, the Huskies find themselves up by six in the ball game, 3.29 remaining, and their fans are up as well, as they've seen Jeff King have an outstanding ball game off the bench for the Huskies. They should be, but see that down screen? He was wide open coming off that. That's what made the play half-court execution. They've done a great job. Here's the pass. You see him coming off it. Nobody really there. A Virginia Commonwealth player trying to recover from the help, getting over to the help side. UConn shooting very well, 56%. They're out rebounding still VCU now 28 to 21. Those two factors very very important. Rams with the basketball coming down to crunch time for Virginia Commonwealth. If they'd like to stay alive in the NIT inside. Steiny has it knocked away, gets it back, and is foul. Well, that time somebody should have went on the floor. That ball was loose. We didn't get one body on the floor at this point in the game. At any point in the game, you got to go on the floor for a loose ball. You got to get some burns on those knees and on those elbows. Still goes to the line now. Second time tonight. He's got 19 points in the ball game. He's one for one. And Terry, you're right. He's just favoring that left knee quite a bit now. And it's really affecting him on defense. That last shot we showed you in the replay of Jeff King. He can't push off. That. that lateral movement goes. He can't go side to side. He can't go from the block out to recover to get, say, a Jeff King. So that may be why Jeff King was open on that last series. One for three from the line for Steiny. And he is still shooting into that UConn student section. And he's got it. So after missing the first, he steadied himself and got the second. He's got 20 points in the ball game. Five point UConn advantage as Tate George comes to half court, finds Robinson. Good job against the half court pressure. Just keeping your head up, always looking, know the double team coming at you right about the half court line. Under three minutes now in the ball game. Huskies to Robinson. Double team gets the jump off. It's off the mark. King with the rebound, puts it up. He's got it. Not a good shot by Cliff Robinson by any means. A double team, not a good position. Should have just kicked it back out when he saw the two time come. But Jeff King, what can you say? When you need the big basket, he's there right now. An outstanding night. Huskies almost come up with a steal. Two and a half minutes remaining. Huskies lead it by seven and a walk. I think BCU might need another timeout. Don't save your timeout so it's too late. They're not executing on the half court offense. They're turning it over. King, nine rebounds, 12 points. You know, a week ago, or not a week ago, five days ago, Murray Williams answered it. Nine turnovers for Virginia Commonwealth. That's 18 lost points. You know, UConn not much better with seven. Let's watch. You Jeff see King the shot again. now. See the double team. No way should he be taking that. He's got to go. Look at Jeff King. Battles in there. Falls back a little bit. Gets a nice little roll. He knows these baskets. He's got 12 points in this ball game, coming in overly averaging 5.7 points per ball game. So you know what kind of game he's had tonight, both point-wise and rebounding-wise. He has kept UConn in this ball game and has given them that seven-point edge. And right now they want to spread the floor a little bit. They want to score, but they want to use some of the uh, the ticks off this clock. They don't have to get any more points. The pressure's on BCU. They know they're going to get pressure. They know also they're going to get fouled at certain points. Try to keep the ball in the hands of the good shooters. St. George. Now Gamble off the rim, no good. Rebound is off to the Rams, but a foul. I believe Derek McGee will get the personal. Jeff King had position, and they're going to say that McGee pushed off from behind, pushing Jeff King out of the way. 
First of all, we had good half-court execution again. Phil Gamble shooting an eight-foot jump shot in the paint. He couldn't ask for much better than that. Jimmy Calhoun again giving a signal right there what he wants off this foul shot, made or missed. And you see also Mike Polio giving a signal on what he wants to happen when his team gets the basketball. Jeff King coming into tonight's ball game, averaging 71%. 12.9 rebounds. He's just played an outstanding ball game. He gets the roll right there. And one more to Jeff King's total for tonight. And increase the Husky lead to eight with 156 remaining. UConn just outstanding on a charity strike. 10 out of 12. And make that 11 out of 13. That's going to be something they're going to be real proud of at the end of this ball game. They're ahead by nine. The biggest lead for either team in this ball game. And the clock is ticking down. 146 remaining. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebound. Stani, and he put it in in a timeout. Stani's got 22 points. And he pulls his ball club to within seven with 141 remaining. And certainly with the three-point play, they're still right in this ball game on the Rams. And we'll find out what happens right after this commercial message. break the Husky fans were yelling final four final four meaning the semi-final round being played at Madison Square Garden next Tuesday night carry their ball clubs up by seven they still have a minute and 41 between them and a win which will put them there well what they've got to do is handle the pressure you're going to see it then get the hands in the, the ball in the hands of the good free throw shooters right now BCU if you look at it Cliff Robinson only shoots 66 percent that's one guy they would like to foul Jeff King shoots it at 71 percent he might be another one the other Husky players shoot it a little bit better they got to move the basketball Murray Williams in the backcourt finds Gamble across the timeline with 130 remaining Tate George Tate at 81 percent is someone that Huskies want to have the ball he shoots it at almost 82 percent He's a clutch free throw shooter. Keep the ball with him as much as they can. Jeff King now to Murray Williams. Back out front. Tate George watched by Lionel Bacon. Time B running down. BCU's got a foul, Mike. They can't wait. It's 109. They're down too many points to wait. When they foul now, it's going to be too late. They've got to come out and commit the foul. Here's Tate George. Break three. He's got two. Tate George has put the Huskies up by nine. 55 seconds. Steiny puts him right back in it. That they didn't get a timeout. Range. They also didn't get a timeout. The ball went in the basket. The bench for BCU was signaling timeout. None of the players called it. I don't understand that. Why they didn't get that timeout. They allowed UConn to get the ball out of bounds and get it in bounds. Then they committed the foul. They didn't call it deliberate. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Bill Stani hit from three-point range, but he was good from NBA range that time. He was some 25, 26 feet from the basket. Let it fly. Hit the three-pointer. The cut the UConn lead to six. Gamble will be on the line for the Huskies. He is four for four from the charity stripe tonight. All in the second half, he's got 14 points in the ballgame. No matter what happens here right now, the Huskies have enough time to just come down and play good, solid defense. Don't commit any fouls. They know they're going to go after the three-point shot. Just get a hand up. Don't foul him on the three-point shot. Phil Gamble, big free throw right there, continuing the outstanding free throw shooting. From that three-point line, whatever you do, don't foul him and give him a chance to get four. 16 points for Phil Gamble. Perfect on the line. He's got one more coming up here with 47 seconds remaining. Gamble, a junior out of Washington, D.C. Connects on both. And he has 12 points and two for two from the foul line. There's that three-pointer. Bacon, no good off the mark. It comes down to McGee. They'll look for another three-pointer here. Chris Cheeks is going to be called for step. Pressure from Gamble turns it over, and the Huskies get the ball back with 38 seconds remaining. That's a 10 cone over for VCU. Again, the same situation for the Huskies. One inbound it, two spread the floor, try to move the basketball before you do get fouled. And there is a foul on Cheeks before the ball's even inbounded. And is that true? The Huskies have only committed one turnover here in the second half. They, they have not played any better. Monday night, they played very well. But when you only turn the ball over one time in this kind of pressure ball game, knowing that you're going to the Big Apple, to Madison Square Garden for the first time in a long time for the NIT, this is just excellent basketball. Jim Calhoun has had this team prepared. They played as well as you can play a basketball game. 
Ari Williams will be on the free throw line. Williams has not been there that, thus far today. And on the free throw line, you see the difference. 11 for 13, 85% for the Huskies. And Williams has a chance to add more. He misses. And a rebound by Tate George. Huskies doing everything right right now. They lead it by eight. 30 seconds remaining. Gamble to Jeff King. And King's going to take the jump. But the shot will not count. A foul will go against the Rams instead. Off the ball. And this is what I disagree with now. Right now, UConn just got penalized. Jeff King made an open jump shot. The referee blew the whistle and called a foul. Off the ball. Takes away the two points from Jeff King and UConn. And only calls it a one-and-one. -one. That is a deliberate foul. You see Jim Calhoun. Now you see the ball being passed around. The Huskies looking for the open man. Gamble sees Jeff King. And see the foul right there? Now that's a deliberate foul because you're penalizing the Huskies on that. That should be a deliberate two shot and a Husky ball out of bounds. Well, Gamble will have the one and one here. His ball club leads it by eight, make it nine. And with each point the Huskies put on the scoreboard, Jim Calhoun does a little Irish jig on the sideline. And hey, he's one of N10 competitors. We ran together at the five-star basketball camp in the summer, 95 degrees. I didn't want to do it. He said, come on, we're going to go run for five miles. He's intense. He's a competitor. Gamble misses his first. He's seven for eight from the free throw line, 18 points. Huskies with a nine-point lead. Steiny jumps it up from long range. No good. And the Huskies come down with it. Steiny fouls. That'll be all for him. And the fans here at the field house at Storrs think that's pretty much it for the Rams. Donnie leads the ball game, 25 points. He is a senior out of Charlottesville, Charlottesville, Virginia. He has played his last ball game for the Rams, and he has given it all here tonight. Well, he did everything he could ask him to do. He played with that intensity. He just was outstanding. 10 for 18 from the field, five re rebounds, 25 points. Uh, just did an outstanding job, but the Huskies uh, met the challenge. Tate George on the line. He has had an outstanding four games tonight. He on the free throw line looking to add to the Huskies total, and he does. He's got five points, and the bonus shot coming up. Well, right now, all the Huskies want to do is put a little pressure on, make him put the ball on the floor, dribble it all the way up the floor, don't commit any foul. Inbound the ball. You know you're going to get fouled again. George, five points. Eight assists in his ball game tonight. And he's got both. Huskies by 11 with 15 seconds remaining. There's Bacon. Long range. It's short. 10 seconds. Gamble with basketball. And this one is just about history. King to Tate George. George. As the crowd counts it down, that's it. Huskies are on to Madison Square Garden. They'll compete in the NIT semifinals for the first time in the school's history. Huskies celebrating at midcourt. And we'll be back here to stores to wrap it up right after this. You see some of the 4,800 people here at the Yukon Fieldhouse and stores. They have left their seats to join their ball club on the floor to celebrate this nine-point win, which sends the Huskies out to the semifinals in the NIT at Madison Square Garden next Tuesday night for the very first time in the school's history. For the Virginia Commonwealth Rams, they fought a good fight throughout the ball game. Unfortunately for them, in the end, it was too much Phil Gamble and Jeff King for the Huskies. And they fall by those nine points, 72-61. Rams finish up the season at 23-12. and 12. But for the Cinderella Big East Huskies, they move on to the semifinals. Certainly nobody expected them to be uh, in the tournament at this stage, and certainly not in the semifinals. They came in with one of the worst one-loss records at 15-14. and 14. They played a very tough a regular season schedule, postseason schedule in the Big East, and that uh, obviously has prepared them for playing here in the postseason as the Huskies go on to win it by nine. UConn over the Rams by nine, and we do have some uh, point totals. Phil Steine was the leading scorer in the ball game, 25 points. 
but the Huskies had a lot of balance. Three people in double figures. Bill Gamble had 18 points, including 13 of those in the second half. Jeff King had 14 and a slew of rebounds, and Cliff Robinson had 17. At one point during the second half, we were tied at 51. And at that point, UConn outscored Virginia Commonwealth 21-10 to pick up the win, run their record to 18-14, and, and a very vic happy, victorious coach, Jim Calhoun, is there with Terry O'Connor. Congratulations. I don't know how much you can hear. A hell of a basketball victory. Your team could not have played better. I think defensively, Terry, we played great, and our maturity was tremendous. What does it mean to you personally to kick this program to the well, NIT? It's just a great... You know, we worked so hard all year, and we couldn't come up with enough wins, but we did tonight. Good luck next week. Go celebrate, enjoy it, and best of luck next week. Mike, back to you. Oh, swallowed up by a huge crowd here at this Doors Fieldhouse. And a very naturally happy crowd celebrating wherever and whenever throughout the Fieldhouse, says UConn celebrating probably the biggest win in the school's basketball history a 72-61 edging of the Virginia Commonwealth University Rams here in the quarterfinals of the NIT. Games also being played around the various parts of the country in the quarterfinal round. And we'll see you at Madison Square Garden next week. Hopefully, if you're a Husky fan, you've got to be happy. Once again, the 